welcome to another episode of Feminine Scope. I am Amanda Ezekwe. Feminine Scope is a program where we discuss issues bordering around women, their challenges and triumphs covering different spheres of their lives. When people think of domestic violence, what comes to mind? They often think of how much it hurts the adult victims. It's true that domestic violence is most often violent and abusive or an intimidating behavior by a man towards a woman or vice versa. But what you may not realize is that children also experience domestic violence, and this affects their physical and emotional health and well-being. Children and young people are often physically hurt during violent episodes, either ex accidentally or deliberately, and the effects most times are devastating. How can we avoid the effects of domestic violence on children? To discuss this with us is a professional counselor, certified marriage and relationship coach, author and speaker. You'll get to meet our guests after the break. Welcome back. Children and young people need to grow up in a secure and nurturing environment. Where domestic or family violence exists, the home is not safe or secure and children are scared about what might happen to them and the people they love. Why do they feel this way? To discuss this with us is Mrs. Ireti Ade Oyile, a professional counselor, certified marriage and relationship coach, author and speaker. She is the president of the Complete Woman Foundation, a nonprofit organization that promotes the interest and well-being of the woman and girl child through advocacy. She's the lead counselor at Green Olives Consult, a counseling and coaching center. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you very much, Amanda. We're thanks talking for having about me here. You're welcome. And thanks for coming. Oh, We're talking about domestic violence. What is domestic violence? In a very um, way, explain it in a way a layman will understand, because mm -hmm. we hear a lot of it, domestic violence, domestic abuse. What exactly is domestic violence? Okay, domestic violence or domestic abuse is um, a pattern of coercive or violent behavior used to manipulate or control an intimate partner. Talking about an intimate partner, it could be those who are in a relationship or those who are cohabiting or those who are legally married. So, and it, it's not just about the physical, you know, most of the time we attribute domestic violence to something that is physical. It's not just physical, we have the emotional aspect of it, the emotional abuse, we have the psychological abuse, we have the financial abuse, sexual abuse, you know, all sorts, like the, 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 the bottom line is, whatever it is that is being used to, you know, intimidate another person or forcefully control uh, a partner is domestic violence. Which is more dominant in our society? Well, the one that is largely reported is the physical abuse, because that you can see physically, maybe the person um, is being injured, you know, blows and all of that. But the emotional aspects, a lot of people are even going through it, but they can't even identify that and being abused, or they are being abused in the relationship. So we can't really say that. Physic Generally, we can say that, okay, the physical abuse is more rampant in the society, but I tell you, the emotional ab abuse, the emotional aspect too, is still very, very much more, you know, um, common in the society. What are the factors that lead to abuse? Well, especially in marriage. Okay, especially in marriage. Well, I want to first of all say that it could be as a result of how the abuser was raised. Someone that was raised in an abusive environment has a likelihood of being abusive as an adult. That's like a long-term effect as an adult. It could be as a result of, you know, association, background, their exposure. We have bullies in schools and all bull uh, those that, bullies, that bully in schools, rather. You know, some of them, if you can trace it, if it's possible to trace it, they might be a victim or someone that has observed abuse in maybe in the family setting. So there are different reasons for abuse, but whatever reason the abuser might have, 
is not genuine. Because you choose to, you know, we, we have our emotions, but we choose how we control our emotions. We can react to things anyhow, but we should be able to put our emotions on the check that I don't have to go violent. I don't have to hurt somebody else. I don't have to be physical on somebody else. I don't have to, you know, like I mentioned the issue of emotional abuse, yes. that I don't have to talk to people anyhow. I don't have to hurt other people's feelings. So a child that grew up in a place where he, when he wakes up in, in the morning, they call him he's stupid, he's, he's this, or he hears that his father is crazy, he's gone bonkers and all of that, grows up to believe that that's just the right way to talk to people, that it's normal. And then somehow a person becomes emotionally abusive because he, he tends to abuse his victim or talks to people anyhow. The name calling, the criticizing of um, people, you know, overly critical about things, you know, body shaming, you know, it all depends on what the, the environmental factors, what this person grew up with. And at the end of the day, he finds himself, or she finds herself, because that's one, one of the things I forgot to mention, that domestic violence is not just about women. It's not gender-based. It could happen to anybody. It could be male abusing the female or female abusing the male. It could be either ways. So we're subtly breeding bullies when it comes to domestic violence in the home. Exactly, one of the factors of bullying. So um, at what age specifically, or what age group does domestic abuse affect mostly? Among children? Among children. Well, as long as that child can see, talk, and understand things. You know, when I say see, you see if a man beating up his wife, even if that child is two years old, even if he's one year old, he knows that something, is, or she knows that something is going on. He knows that this is, someone is crying, because they can beat you and then you keep quiet. He knows that someone is crying. He might not fully comprehend, but he could, you know, he has, he, he's exposed to that kind of violence, he can see. And so as they grow older, they become, they, they get to know more. They get to understand more. And it even depends on the part of the parent now that they, they get to listen to. If the father is being seen as, maybe it's the father now that is abusive, and um, the mother keeps saying, look at your father, see what he's doing to me. I'm in this marriage because of you. I don't want anything bad to happen to you. That's why I'm risking my life. That's why. So the child grows up, you know, you can't tell a one-year-old that and he will get to understand you properly. But as they continue to grow older, where they can understand conversations, where they can, you know, pin things together, then it, it, become, it, it gets to affect them more. And especially teenagers. I would say teenagers because, you know, problems with teenagers, especially when you're not friends with them from the beginning. Exactly. They tend to bottle up things or share with friends. And the process of trying to share with friends, they might end up sharing with the wrong set of people. So it gets to affect them. They can think more. They bottle up things more. On a normal day, they don't want to talk. And now this is happening to them. It kind of push, pushes them into their shell further or makes them look for other means of, you know, maybe maladaptive ways of, you know, of um, curbing the, the effect on them or, or maybe protecting themselves or kind of making them forget what is going on around them. What are some of the effects on children? Okay. Some of this, the effects, you know, the effect can be um, divided into two, two phases. The short-term effect, which is the immediate effect. Okay. Now, a child that... Um, has experienced violence or has witnessed violence, you know, might tend to go back into maybe a, a, a habit that they've been, they, they, they've been used to or that they had before and they've overcame, uh, and then they go back into it. For instance, bedwetting. Oh, really? Yes, bedwetting. They can have, you know, nightmares. Because it's like it's replayed in their mind and then they get to scream and all of that. Tom sucking. You know, we, it's quite common with toddlers. No, this, this are, <laughs> these things are actually strange. Yeah. They, they, they get to, you know, they did, they probably when they were growing, they did it as a kind of means of pacifying themselves. You understand? Yes. And then all of a sudden this is coming up 
and then let me go back to my pacifier, that kind of a thing. And then you, most of them, not all, go back into all of this. Some will withdraw. They don't want to have anything to do with anybody. They just keep quiet and all of that. And some will keep crying uncontrollably, especially after witnessing the situation or the, 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 the violence. And you know, they keep shouting, they keep screaming and all of that, throwing tantrums unnecessarily. So those are part of the you know, short-term short effect. effect. Of course, or, or, or also for those that are not you know, toddlers now, when looking at those that are a bit grown up, like the, the preteens, the adolescents, they might slip into depression. Hmm. They might. Why? Because maybe in school, they used to do very well academically. All of a sudden, their grades start dropping, which is also an effect, a, a side effect of this violence. And then the parents now, you know, slams it on them that you used to be this before. Now what happened to you? You know, he can't explain himself. She can't explain herself why her grades are dropping. dropping. But the whole blame will be put on that child that you're, you're too playful. They are not looking at it that could it be as a result of what he witnessed or what he's going through in the family. Parents never think of that. Their minds never go to that extent that, okay, it might be what's going on in our home that caused this. So what are the long-term effects? Okay, the long-term effects, I think I mentioned that at the very beginning, that most abusers were also victims of abuse, whether they witnessed it or they were abused themselves. So part of the long-term effect is that they might end up being abusive in their relationship with their partners. That means that it's a circle. As one drops it to the other, like a button, the relay race, like you drop a generational it. Yes, thing. It's a generational thing. And so it keeps going on and on until a person decides that, look, I don't want this to continue. Not just wishing it away, but taking necessary steps into curbing it or into putting an end to it. Some of them, for instance, for the, for the, uh, for the boys, seeing a, their mother being beaten up or being abused by the father, they just believe that, okay, all females should be dealt beaten, with, yes. that they should be beaten, they should be talked down on, they should be criticized. You know, I told you that it's not just about the physical aspect of it, and uh, that they, they could do anything to them. They are more superior than the female. So they should always be on beneath them. Now for the female, watching the mother being abused, and she kind of, you know, keeps mom, and you know, she's like, okay, it's because of you I'm still here. Uh, let me tolerate this more and all of that. They believe that. They tend to believe that it is normal for a female to be abused. That that is just, it's a, it's a men's world. You know, we hear this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a men's world. So it's a men's world. Okay, we'll remain that way. Since uh, if he didn't kill my mother, it won't kill me. And so <laughs> the cycle continues. Do, do you think it plays out the same way now? Well, now there is more, there, we have more awareness. More awareness, if only people will not stigmatize the victims. More people will come out and they will talk about it. And then, you know, my own, uh, another aspect of this awareness is not just for the victim, but even for the abuser to know that he needs help or she needs help, that this is not normal. You are building. A, a, a wrong foundation. You are laying a wrong foundation. And when you lay a wrong foundation, the building will eventually collapse someday. Most of them don't even know they are doing the wrong thing. So how, at what stage does okay. an abuser realize he or she needs help? Okay. Now, <laughs> if an abuser will not pick himself and use a weapon to cut himself, you know, if he's using a weapon on himself, you know that he has maybe a, a, a psychiatric yes. challenge or something. Now, if you can't cut yourself, or you can't beat yourself, or if someone beats you and you can feel the pain, then why will you think that when you beat another person, she won't feel it? Why will you think that beating somebody else will make you want someone to succumb to you or to, to, but to bow to your rules, and you think that the only thing you have to do is to hit the person? Then it shows that the man or the woman is a coward. It's as simple as that. So if you know that, it's painful to beat yourself. It's painful. You say, there's something that we say, do unto others what, what you, you will want them to do to you. you. So put yourself in that victim's shoe. 
And when you're doing that, it's not when he's actually um, in, in the presence of, you know, hitting the person or something. You know, there are times that they will be calm. They will not mm -hmm. be abusive also. Yes. Let him have a sober reflection and look or her and then look at it and say, okay, what exactly is it that I'm doing? If I were to be treated this way, would I like it? If not, then I need to seek help. And the kind of help you have to seek is from a professional. You can't go and seek help. You know, some of these people are being encouraged or supported by their parents, indirectly. Parents, family members. You have a son that is abusive, and the wife comes to you as a mother. That, look, my husband is abusive. Your son is abusive. He does this to me, and it's, it, I don't know what to do again. And they're like, you're the one that is guilty. Whenever you see him in that aggressive mood, you just keep mom going and sit down in one place. Do what did you do? The first question is, what did you do to him? Someone said that recently, and um, she said she went to complain, and they told her to stop talking. That is because she spoke back. That was why he was abusive. Can you imagine? You know, I said it before that if we choose the way we control our emotions, even if she spoke back, even if she, she was the one that initiated, you know, the, the conversation or, or the, the wrong conversation, maybe the conversation struck a wrong note, it is not in the place of the man to retaliate by physically abusing her. It's not. He has control over his emotions. He should be able to control his emotions. That I choose to react this way. Yes, you, you said I'm crazy, but I choose not to get angry. It's a choice. I choose not to get physical about the whole thing. Maybe what, what should I do? Can I walk away? Can I look for just an escape? Or can I just turn it into humor? And then, you know, even if she's angry, and I just, you know, depending on how hot the situation it is, is yes. the head, because that could make the person get more angry, angry. and then you could just start misbehaving and all of that. As much as possible, when it comes to violence, make sure that your life, you know, you, you place premium value on your life. So you don't stay, stay around a violent person when he's manifesting or she's manifesting, and then you're saying you want to make him laugh or something. It might not work. So, but you'll be able to assess the situation. You know the person because we're talking about marriage here. Yes. You already know the man. You know the woman. It could be the man. It could be the woman. So I won't be biased mm -hmm. here. Yeah. You already know your partner. Okay, I think that's the best word. You already know your partner. This is what, you know, gets him angry. Okay, when he's at this stage, when he's angry, the next thing is he becomes physical. So what do I do? I've started seeing him manifesting that trait already. So what should I do? Find a way of escape. Either I want to say, okay, quickly, I want to go and see somebody. I want to do this, you know, just fine, so that it doesn't get to that stage. A lady said keeping quiet has become her coping mechanism. How mm. does it work? Because at a point, keeping quiet, one day sh she will explode. Obviously. So how does it work? Hmm. Keeping quiet, maybe so that the man will not hit her might work yes. at that particular time. Yes. But emotionally, you know, I told you, we have different types of abuse. Emotionally, it's not going to help her. Psychologically, it's not going to help her. Because as you keep bottling things up, one day, just like you said, she will explode. And sometimes that explosion might not just be by words. She might also go physical. Hmm. She might just pick up a weapon out of, you know, the anger. pent up anger and everything. And, then, and it could be that particular day that she would, you know, strike the man or, or, and, and the man would probably lose his life. And people will begin to wonder, what happened when he was abusing her? Nobody did anything. But you know the law will yes, take its course exactly. when she eventually commits murder. So keeping quiet at that particular time to solve maybe the physical stuff so that it doesn't get physical with the woman, fine. But keeping quiet and not seeking help is very dangerous. That, okay, that's my coping mechanism. Let me just keep quiet and be looking one day. <laughs> the person will eventually explode. And then, as, like we said, we are not talking about just the partner here. The children the are children, there. children, yes. And they, are learn, they learn from what we do, not just what we see. So if my dad tells my mom she's stupid and she keeps quiet because she doesn't want to fight, then I can tell a woman or a girl that she's stupid. I can say she's crazy. I can tell her that she's good for nothing. I can say anything to her. 
a woman complained that um, because she has adult kids now. Okay. She said one day her son um, called her and asked her why she stayed in the marriage. Okay. And she told the son, I stayed because of you, my mm. kids. And the son told her that he forgives her, but he, has hate, he, he hated Hate. her for, because, doing for doing that. Mm. How can you explain that? You're fighting because of the children, but the children you're fighting for are not happy with you. You know, you, she, like, like the example you just gave now, she, it's, a, it's our own side of the story that, okay, I'm doing this because of, your, of you children, but the children are seeing something else. They are witnessing something else. So it's not, you know, I said, they learn by what we do, yes. not just what we say. So they can see that things are not working well. They are traumatized. They, 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 they kind of feel insecure. They kind of feel, you know, they, 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 they have nightmares. They, they, they might even become bullies in school and get punished. You know, they don't have friends because people don't like them, or some of them might even withdraw into their shell. They've got, gotten themselves involved. Some might even resolve into using substance, you know. Yes, abuse. It's, it's you the most common one. This yes. Thing. And so tell me someone that went through that process that will not be pleased with the mom saying that I stayed and allowed you to witness all of this because of what? What was she trying to achieve? That, okay, that we are one big family. They are, not, they are not actually one big family. Because if they realize that they're doing more damage to the child, they would have looked for a better way out. That, okay, if this has to stop, this obviously it must stop. What should we do? How can we get a support system? Who can call this man to order? Or who can call this woman to order? Can, will she um, decide to go for help or seek help? Let's see, because it's not, sometimes it's not, or rather, let me say most times it's not all those involved in one form of violence or the other that they break up apart. Some of them seek help on time, and they are able to overcome it. But for those that, you know, they keep mom, you're encouraging your abuser to do more. Maybe today he slaps her. She did not say anything. Okay, I can do more. And it keeps, you know, it, get, it keeps getting worse. What do you advise when the abuse gets worse? Now, in fact, before the abuse gets worse, prevention, they say, is safer or is better than cure. cure. But I say it's safer and cheaper than cure. First of all, who can you talk to concerning your situation? You know, we've been made to believe that, okay, when you get married, don't allow third party in your marriage. Mm -hmm. what, what, what. If the third party are people that are unbiased, there are people that you know that your husband respects, not necessarily his parents. People that you know it, 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 it can call him to order. People that he knows is accountable to. Then you can reach out to them. This is what is going on in my home, between myself and my spouse. Please, is there a way you can help? And then like I mentioned, we also have counselors, professional counselors. Seek counsel from the right place. But do you think Nigerians have still valuing counselors? That's the challenge because in a society, everything is all about being free. It should be free of charge. So they would rather prefer to go to someone that will not charge them, whether he's qualified or not. And then this is what I'm going through. And they tell you, stay there. It happened to so-so and so person. She did not die. She stayed there. <laughs> Imagine a woman goes to her mother and says, ah, look at what my husband is doing to me. And the mother is like, even your father did the same, same thing, thing to me. me. And see me, I'm still here. They've forgotten that no two individuals are the same. That you're able to escape, that you're able to cope, doesn't mean that the other person too will be able to cope. Doesn't mean that the, the, the aftermath will be the same. Things are happening. People want, the, you know, we're getting more enlightened that you, yes, you want your voice. In those days, no, but no woman is looking at, yes, I, I want to be heard. But now people want to be heard, but when someone is there to shush them, they say, no, 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 you're not going anywhere. This is where I want you. I want to control you. I want to break you off from other people. You know, they don't want to have, have it that way. Again, they're more enlightened. Yes. And so they want to, you know, seek help. And that's why I said, the best thing is if you want to seek help, seek help from the right places. Yes, if, if it's a religious organization that, you're, you're, that you feel that your husband will be accountable to, 
Fine, if that works for you, no problem. I was but, even coming to that. Okay. What role has religion played? Hmm. Well, I'll talk more about Christianity because I'm a Christian. I would say that before now, you know, it was more like if you are, you're into the marriage, you're into the marriage. For better, for, for worse. worse. But that worse shouldn't be the man, you know, doing something that, is, um, that can take your life. The, the truth of the matter is, if you die as a woman, <laughs> it will bring in another woman. Mm -hmm. And the circle will continue because it will be abusive to her too. It won't learn its lesson. So, now looking at um, the church when they tell you that, okay, uh, you should not move out, stay there and be praying. That was what it was like before. Stay there and be praying. It but will change. It will change. <laughs> now, if it doesn't change, the same church would link, uh, would, you, um, uh, what's it called now, would um, join, them join him and another woman together in holy matrimony because you're permitted to marry once your partner is dead. Now, now the awareness is there, even in the religious, that's in the church organization, that, okay, if something is going on, don't keep quiet. Talk about it. Let them try to see their interventions and all of that. But if, if it's so bad and it's life-threatening, they would say it's better you separate while, you know, you seek help. Both will seek help. Not that they just tell them separate and then everybody goes, everybody their, goes way. their way. No, 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 no. You're separating because physically you don't want um, a, a, any kind of accident or you don't want any form of um, loss of life or something or someone being maimed because he or she is in a relationship or he's in a marriage. But you're separating because you want both of them to see that, okay, do I still want this marriage? What should I do? And you're separating because you don't want the children to continue to witness yes. this kind of awful event, traumatizing event. So the awareness is also coming up. Also, I'm not saying it's, it's, so, it's so, so clear now. I'm not saying it's 100%. Yeah. But the but awareness is also coming up. Yes. Aware, and people have started advocating for it. For it, yes. That you, you don't come around and tell me that stay in the marriage and be praying. It's better for me to stay somewhere safe and pray for him in a safe space <laughs> than to say I'm praying in a dangerous zone and I might end up losing my life. Especially when children are involved. Especially when children are involved. This has nothing to do with, you know, the issue is, that, okay, divorce is not permitted. And all. This has nothing to do with divorce. There are two people that, you know, you, that's why I said, before it gets worse, seek help. But most of the time, the women, especially in the church setting, they don't want to talk. Especially maybe the man is um, notable or he has mm -hmm. one title. Oh, maybe I'm, he's a pastor. So how will the wife act that if I tell them and then they get to suspend him, I'll no longer be a pastor's wife? Okay, people will not be looking at me that, ah, look at pastor's wife. Look at what happened to her. You know? Yes. Church what, people. What people will yes, say. Yes, what people will say. And then they say, okay, it will change. And I'll be praying. But you know, if, he, if she dies as a result of violence or the, uh, the, uh, abuse in whatever way, nobody will know. True. Especially if it's something that will, had to do with the psychological thing or uh, psychological abuse or emotional abuse, the, the bruises are not there. Mm -hmm. But the injury is internal. Nobody gets to see it. She develops high blood pressure. They will say, what killed her is high blood pressure. She, but slumped, what actually, and she slumped and died. But what actually is the genesis of that high blood pressure? What brought about that situation? But who would talk? Nobody, because she didn't open her mouth to tell anyone that she's been abused. Except maybe the children that witnessed it might be able, that's if they have an understanding, might be able to say that this was what happened to her mom. But most of the time, they won't even talk, but they get to hate their father. If it's the man now, or if it's a woman, they get to hate that parent. That you, they, they know, especially if they're grown, they've been grown up, mm -hmm. that it's this man that killed my mother. How does domestic violence affect um, the growth of children. Hmm. I mentioned um, earlier about their academics. Now, talking about their academic growth now, someone who happens to be very bright, you know, academically, all of a sudden, because of the situation at home, her grades or his grades begin to drop. And when it drops, nobody to follow up, maybe even the teachers are not that sensitive, 
and then um, name calling, you are, you, are, you are a moron, you don't even know anything. And then the child begins to withdraw. And when they withdraw, they might, you know, get exposed to substance, like yes. I mentioned, or unruly behavior. They become a menace to the society because they're just trying to, nobody seems to understand me, but I just want to express myself anyhow. And then in the process, they do it in the wrong way. And then no, there's no one gets to under, really, really understand them. So it affects them where, it affects what, what um, the kind of vision they want to have for their future. That, okay, this is where I want to be in future. But that has been stunted. What about those that, okay, it affects their self-esteem? Anywhere they go, they can't be confident, they can't be bold. They just believe that they are worthless. So for someone who sees herself worthless or sees himself worthless, what does he expect? You know, to what contribution does he expect to make to the society? Or what does the society expect from such a fellow? Mm -hmm. So it affects them. No, it, it might not make them grow shorter. <laughs> physically. <laughs> physically, yes. It might not affect them physically. You know, apart, why I didn't want to use the word physically is that, okay, what if they are also victims? Because it's possible in the process of trying to beat up the mother, he hits the child, maybe on the eye. And then he loses one eye. Anything can happen. You know, they can just be there as, um, how would I put it now? Trying to defend their Try, mom uh, yeah, or their exactly. dad. Yeah, exactly. Or they are just innocent, innocent victims or observer. Just like stray bullets, God forbid. You know, it hits them. They were not really the victims. But somehow, as an observer, they now turned to become a victim. So, like I said, that it, it might not affect them as in that you see physical signs or whatever. But emotionally, it will stunt their growth. Psychologically, it could stunt their growth. You know, they can't relate with people properly. It affects their relationship with others. So socially, they can't even interact with people. And they tend to, you know, they, they, they get the blame for what was not actually their own fault. fault. Yes, that's the word. Their own fault. So people, and then they it themselves, Two, will turn out to become, you know, aggressive in their relationship. And if they're aggressive in their relationship, they might not be able to have a stable relationship. They might not Which be able Which affects to. them into adulthood. Into adulthood. It does. So this is actually a vicious circle. It is. It is. It is. We've been discussing the effects of domestic violence on children. We'll be going on a short break. And when we come back, we'll talk about how to help children who has experienced domestic violence. Please stay tuned. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Feminine Scope, and we have been discussing the effect of domestic violence on children. We still have our guest in the studio, a professional counselor, certified marriage and relationship coach. Mrs. Ireti Ade Uyile. We're back, ma'am. Thank you. Now we're going to face the children squarely. Okay. How can we help children who have been abused in the home through domestic violence? Okay. The first point of call is their immediate family. That means that when the mother or father decides to report to the immediate family, there should be like a support system for those children. Support system in the family could be like, okay, you're picking them from that, you know, that environment to a safe space. And when they come to the safe space, you still need the help of a professional, you know, to take them through. Because some of them, you know, fall into, um, you know, because of the traumatic experience some like i said could slip into de depression if they are lucky they, uh, they, they don't get suicidal you know but the the, the traumatic experience the post-traumatic stress disorder you know could happen to them and all of that so it will be the work of a professional to be able to identify that this is what is wrong with this person how can i help so you don't just look at it that for instance if it affected it has affected them academically now you don't just look at it that, okay, your grades are poor, and so we, we have to get you extra lesson teacher. You talk no, 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 to no. them anyhow. That's, <laughs> that what really pains them. When so so you, now, you now have to look at it that, okay, I need the help of 
somebody who can identify the problem and then will walk, walk them through the process as in to support them. You don't come about because you're, you're a family member, you're not their direct parent. You don't say, don't, don't come and you know, give me st stress here. Or, uh, um, after all, I'm not the one that gave birth to you. You're compounding the problem. There are a lot of you know, help centers, support systems you know, that we can give to them, to the children. But the most important thing is that we should, first of all, bring it, them out of that, um, that toxic space and let them grow. They deserve to grow in an environment filled with love. They need a proper orientation. Because for the boy that has seen the father beating up the mother, who believes that beating up a, a girl is not a big deal, needs a reorientation. And that cannot just come overnight. It's a process. They might get, you know, get off it and then slip back into it, just like someone that is recovering from an addiction or something. But at least let there be a support system for them. And why, that's why I said the immediate family. There are people that they know. Not that the immediate family will be the one supporting their own child. That, okay, uh -huh, you can go ahead. You don't call him to order and all of that. But let them know that for the sake of the children. Because you don't want to groom um, monsters. monsters, yes. You don't want to groom monsters. So for the sake of these children, we can help you take care of them for a while while you guys sort yourself oh. out. And then for the mother, you know, because of the effect it will have, if you know that that space is not safe for you, you've tried everything and it's not working, it's better you find a place that is safe for yourself and the children. You know, most times the abusers would, you know, threaten the woman that I will take your children from you. I will send you away. You will not have access to them again. And that's why they will continue to remain in that relationship or in that Now marriage. we have safe homes for women. Yes. Scattered all over. It's just to get where they can stay for a while once they find their feet. They are settled and they go off. Yeah. The, another thing we should look at again is if you're about concerning these um, safe homes, so to speak. Do we really have enough spaces in this safe home? What can they do to help? But of, obviously, that's why I said it starts from the immediate family. Now, if the immediate family will not be available for them, then we'll talk about them going out there. Because if everybody has, you know, going through abuse, will have to go to a safe home. Mm -hmm. Where would the space be? Do you understand? Yes. So the family is supposed to be the number one safe, that's their immediate family, family. The num number one safe space for them. Not a place where they will go to and they, they keep calling them the names they were trying to avoid. You know, that you know, there's no divorcee here. So what are you coming here mm -hmm. to do? There's no space for I you. I didn't here. leave my husband. I didn't leave her here. So why, why should you come? We don't leave our matrimonial so, home. Exactly. That is not in our lineage. So you cannot be the first person to start it. So most of the time they look at, and that's why some of them are afraid to leave. Where am I actually going to? You know, I mentioned the issue of financial abuse. Someone who, we, the, the abuser has already ensured that they don't really have access to funds. Maybe he says, you, you shouldn't work. Stay at home and take care of the children. So he, he, her, uh, her upkeep is solely dependent on what the man gives her. Now he withdraws that. She doesn't have money. The parents don't want her to come. Where will she go to? Now, OK, thank you for the, the support homes. But do, do, do we have them all over the states of the Federation? I know Lagos State is doing a fantastic, fantastic job. job. Yes. They take it seriously. Yes. If others can learn from them, it will also help. But like I said, it's not like it's some, um, something that can be sustained. They can't be there in that home for a long period of time. They can't. So that's why while you're in it, you should know that you should have an exit plan. You don't just pack your things and say you're moving. Now, if you choose to stay, how am I, what are the things I'm supposed to do? Will it be safe for my children? Will it be safe for me? Not just physically now, emotionally. Is my husband willing to get help? Or is my wife willing to get help? Like I said, it's not all domestic violence cases that you know, they end up Absolutely. separated yes. or end up in divorce. They still come, some still decide that, okay, we can, maybe it just happened. Like, you know, when I gave the definition, I said it's a pattern. For some, it's not a pattern. Maybe, let me give this example loosely. 
a man that just lost his job. He had always had things rosy growing up. Now, he, he got, got his job without any stress. All of a sudden, at the peak of his career, he loses the job. He was raised in a place where he, does, he wasn't even, you know, empowered with, you know, resilient skills, nothing. And then he finds himself in that kind of a situation. How can he cope? Everything just hits him like that. And then maybe the wife, on the other hand, so she, she's not so happy about this situation. Oh, and she's so concerned. My friends would say that I'm, I'm suffering. You know, what putting would, would, pressure on putting the man. Putting pressure on the man. And then he looks at it. What can I do to shut this woman? Not because he grew up seeing his parents abusive. And then he just maybe slaps her once or hits her. And then the woman says, okay, I'm packing my things today. You are now abusive, so I'm going my own way. Do you understand? Yes. So, in that kind of a situation, it's because of the circumstance. Though that is not an excuse to hit a woman, but the man, if he gets timely help, will know that, okay, this is the source of my problem. Now, how do I navigate through this and, and be a better person? I was not raised this way, so I shouldn't become a monster overnight. And then in that kind of a situation, maybe they are able to resolve their differences with the help of maybe a professional and all of that. Along the line, they are, you know, they are safe and they are, everything is okay. You know, for that woman now, she will come out and say, ah, my husband was abusive. <laughs> Definitely. She <laughs> but was, he I was. Over, Yes, but I overcame it. And then someone who the, the, has been having that pattern of abuse in her home will say, okay, this person said, her husband was abusive. You know, we don't give full stories some, most times. Mm -hmm. ah, her husband was abusive. So what should I do? Let me continue to stay. I will follow her pattern. If she's lucky, she might still be there alive. But if not, she might be emotionally, psychologically, even if not physically, damaged. How can we protect the children? Okay. So pro protecting the children starts from both partners, knowing that whatever I'm doing, has a long-term and a short-term effect on the children. Why should I be abusive? If I'm raising children, I know I'm raising another generation. I know that they will continue from where I stopped. I won't be here forever. And whatever I lay down as foundation, if parents can have this at the back of their minds that, look, whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it against the future. They will pay more attention to their children. They will pay more attention to what, you know, what they make them experience. And so you come around and be sure. It starts from before you even say you want to get married. Because for an abuser, you would have start, started seeing the red flags yes. during the, um, the courtship or the dating period. So you don't just say because you are so madly involved, uh, in love, rather, and you get married to him, and hoping and wishing that it will not become uh, violent in marriage or something. Now, when you ignore that the signs and then you get married to him, then you know that you are in for something else. Now, in the process, you know, once you are married, people expect, especially in our culture, you start giving up, uh, you know. Excuses. Give, uh, uh, uh. So, now when you now have your children coming into the scene, in an environment that is toxic, you know that you're not helping the society. The family is, a, a, is one of the institutions that holds the society because that is where they model human beings. That's the source of bringing human beings to life and source of nurturing them. So if you don't take care of them properly, it will affect the way they will manifest in society. And it will affect the way they too will go ahead you know, to raise their own children and the circle continues. Mm -hmm. So we should ensure a safe space for those children. Number one, as individuals, if you know you're abusive, you have that tendency before you get married, go and seek help. You don't have to be a burden on somebody else. You don't have to kill somebody now, most of you. So there's no harm in seeking help. And I think most of the time, the, the, the focus is on the victim. Oh, victim, seek help. Victim, seek help early. But tell the abuser, too, to seek help. Then let the, the, the parents now, you know, like I said, that it's a circle. When you are raising your children, don't raise them to be abusive. A child that, you know, um, wants something and is using a manipulative way of collecting it from you. He starts crying. He starts, you know, hitting, hitting the ground, throwing tantrums and all of that. And then you say, okay, let me pacify you. Take. You're growing them. 
you're nurturing, you know, someone that will be manipulated. Yes, yeah. abuser. And so at the end of the day, you might not know, but that's what's happening. And thank God for this program. That, okay, if that is what is happening to your children now that you're doing to them, please raise them well. Let them know that they cannot have their way in everything, in all things. It mustn't always be their way. Let them know that when, they, when someone is assertive, they, they should respect the person's wishes. If he says no, no is no. Let them train them to, you know, to, to know how to relate with people properly. You know how to, when you are, you, you've done something wrong, you know when to say sorry. You know when to say please. Let them also know that abuse is not right. It's not proper. So you don't, you know, accept it. So, for instance, at their own stage, maybe bullying in schools. That, okay, someone bullies you and, you, and he says you must not tell anybody. If you tell somebody or abuses you sexually, you say you must not tell anybody. If you tell somebody, I'm going to do worse. They should be bold enough. You should put that, you, that, they should be confident enough to report the matter. That this is what is going on. This must be stopped. That's how we can protect them, by empowering them with the necessary skills that they need to be able to stand their ground, their self -esteem, to boost their self-esteem. That, okay, I can stand. No one can talk down on me. This is me. I'm not looking for trouble, so don't look for my trouble. And then, if you have to look for my trouble, I don't have to respond physically. That, okay, I have to hit you to make you keep quiet or something. I know that I have to report you to someone that is higher than you. And when they report, especially even in the family, when someone reports, when a child reports that, my brother did this to me, my, my sister did this to me, don't take sides. Don't say, just leave your brother alone. He's a small boy. Leave your sister alone. She's a small girl. She will understand later. She didn't mean it. You're not being fair on that person. So the child should, you know, grow up where in an environment filled with love, where they are properly trained and groomed to fit into the society. That no matter what you're going through, you don't have to carry out that aggression on the people around you. We sincerely appreciate you, ma'am, for taking out time to be with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here. Our guest has been Mrs. Ireti Ade Oyile, a professional counselor, certified marriage and relationship coach, author and speaker. She is the president of the Complete Woman Foundation a non-profit organization that promotes the interest and well-being of the woman and girl child through advocacy. She is the lead counselor at Green Olives Consult, a counseling and coaching center. Finally, many children exposed to violence in the home are also victims of the abuse. What is important to remember is that even though you feel they haven't witnessed it because you think they are still kids and cannot really comprehend what exactly is going on, there is a good chance they have. Many times children who live in an abusive home are referred to as the silent victims. Children who witness domestic violence or are victims of abuse themselves are at serious risk for long-term physical and mental health issues. This is why early intervention is so important. Children who witness violence between parents may also be at greater risk of being violent in their future relationships. If you are a parent who is experiencing abuse, it can be difficult to know how to protect your child. But you must protect your child. Please seek help. That's the much we can take on the program today. Until next week, bye-bye.